Hey guys, it's Anthony. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're, we're going to talk about where the market went this past week, where we think the market is going this coming week, and if you're looking to become a consistently profitable trader, definitely hit that subscribe button. I personally trade ES and NASDAQ futures. If you trade that, you'll definitely want to subscribe. It's taken me just over two years to become consistently profitable. Lots of trial and error, lots of lessons learned, and lots of pain, but over time, I became more consistent, and I believe that you will as well if you're not already. So without further ado, we're, we're going to dive into the charts. Uh, just before we do that, actually, give this video a thumbs up if you appreciate it. I post two videos a week with all my market analysis and the trades I'm in, one every Sunday and one every Thursday night. So now, with that being said, after you hit that thumbs up button, let's dive into it. We're on NASDAQ weekly chart right now, and I wanted to zoom out, do a big top-down analysis just to see where we're at. Obviously, this is the all-time highest to the left here, sold off, <clears throat> and we're above all the moving averages. And on the NASDAQ, it's been extremely strong, right? We got in a bullish market structure, but then began uh, getting rejection, you know, took out this swing low, just retraced into the resistance to the left and then dumped again and then uh, went back up into resistance to the left and dumped again. And I have these lines. These are levels on the daily chart. Uh, we're currently sitting at the last level I have for the daily chart. Essentially, not a whole lot until about 14,300, 14,400 as a next support after, you know, if we potentially get below this level. And then after that, uh, the next one is down here at 13,800. So, I'm in the camp that we will sweep the low one more time and get to you know 14,400 on the Nasdaq uh, at some point in the next week or two, and then essentially from that 14,400 area, I believe that we will get that end of year rally. I think the dollar will cool off, so I'm basically just think we'll we'll get down here, come to resistance uh, and support there, basically bounce back up and start to trend back up into the end of the year, getting back to that 16,000 area possibly taking out the recent highs above 16,300 by end of December 2023. That's the camp I'm in and we'll have to wait and see what happens, but let's actually drop it down to the daily chart so we can see this a little more clearly. So on the daily chart, we can see uh, the blue one's a 50 day moving average and then the red one is a 200 day moving average. Uh, typically when we do get corrections, they kind of come in three waves. So if you just take a look right now, you'll see we sold off. That's one wave you could say. We had a retracement and sold off, took out the low again. That's the second wave and then retraced and then sell off again one more time for a third wave. Maybe we get down to you know, 4,400, 4,300 and then bounce from there. And that's basically my final target for NASDAQ on the downside. So I'm looking to actually build into longs once we get a one hour bullish market structure after we take out these lows. So what I'm looking for this week is if we take out these lows and then we get any bullish one hour market structure shift, I'll be looking to get in, enter in longs and then move stops below all of the, the whatever low we put in in this coming week or two. That's my whole game plan for the NASDAQ. Uh, let's go down to the four hour chart now. Four hour chart, again, I basically took out this swing low here. Obvious next target is at 14,585. However, um, that could be held on to for a bit because we already took out this major swing low here. So what could happen is we take out the swing low, get a retracement back up. Uh, we could even bounce all the way back up to test 14,800 at some point this week, but then sell off again and then take out the lows for one more flush into 14,400. So, you know, we are still holding this level here on the four hour. Uh, let's go to the one hour, still bearish, obviously one hour bearish. Uh, what I would like to see is let's say we do just start dumping early next week. Uh, as soon as we put in a bullish market structure of a higher high and a higher low on the one hour, then I'll look in a long and I'll just put my stops below, below whatever, you know, let's say we get in at 4,600 and then the stop is below, you know, let's say the low is at like 14,350. On my target, I'm going all the way up. I'm basically targeting, you know, 15,000, 16,000 at some point by the end of the year. I'm looking to hold that for weeks or months. But after covering that now, let's take a look at ES. Here's ES on the weekly chart. Again, we have the all-time highs here. And then now we have, we rallied up, we sold off. Bearish market structure came into resistance to the left, sold off really aggressive here. Uh, didn't get much of a rally and then back down to take out the lows essentially. But there is a ton of support here on ES. That's why you know, there's more room for downside now on the NASDAQ, even though previously NASDAQ was stronger than ES throughout the sell-off, I think it'll flip. There's just so much more room to the downside on NASDAQ and there's so much less room to the downside on ES. Like look at all the support here to the left. I really don't see us getting below 4,200 on futures. Uh, like we could get below for a day or something like a wick, but I just don't see us really closing below that 4,200 level. I just think we'll have some wicks around there and, and then trend back up and then take out 4,700 by the end of the year on ES. So, that is the weekly chart. 
Now let's take a look at ES on the daily chart. Daily chart, uh, previous video I said that every time we, after a bear market, when we get above the 200 day moving average, once they're all both sloping up, after we sell off, we could test the 200 day. But once we close back above, we don't really go any much lower before taking out the highs we made, say at 4,700. What that basically implies is there's really not a lot of downside, in my opinion, for ES. We could wick the wick below, go to 4,200, but like I don't see uh, another 100 or 200 point drop. Uh, 50 point drop, sure. 100 point drop, not likely. 200 point drop, extremely unlikely. So if you wanted to build longs, uh, now's a good time, long term, but we've got to wait for a bullish market structure shift, in my opinion, on the four hour at least, or the one hour. Uh, this is my last zone on ES, 40, 4240. And you no, know, we'll see if we hold there. Four hour chart now on ES, same idea, just tapping, tapping, tapping. I, you know, one more flush, and I think we're on our way. So not a whole lot to look at there. Last things I want to look at is a dollar, the VIX, and then the yields. So let's take a look at the VIX. Now in the VIX, again, I don't like this if I'm looking for longs. I like this if I'm looking for shorts because there's a 200-day moving average, there's a 50-day moving average. Um, they're basically, you know, 200 days still pointing out, but the 50 days pointing up and the VIX is above both. And when it is, that means it's very strong. And typically when it's very strong, the market obviously sells off. So what I'm looking for is another bar like this. You know, that's when I can be maybe a little more confident that we're, we have have had a bottom because we want a big gap up in the VIX, we want a big push up, but then an intraday rejection. This is, does not look like an intraday rejection. So the bottom is not in, in my opinion. We want to see something like this, right? We want to see something like this. If we go back to March, we want to see something like this, big candle up and a big rejection back down. That's when a bottom is in and the market typically goes up. So just watching the VIX for maybe a push to 24 or something. And then the same day, you know, we're at 24, but we close at like 22 or 21. So it looks like a big rejection candle. Then maybe a bottom has been put in on ES and NASDAQ. Now, DXY, uh, it's bearish in my opinion, right? We've been pushing up, pushing up, pushing up. However, we're still above the moving averages. So on the weekly, we're still definitely still bullish. But on the daily, we sold off, took out the low, pushed up to about 50%, and now we're kind of weak, right? So maybe two things, obviously. Right? We're in a bearish market structure shift on the, on the daily, on the dollar, so we could just roll over. If it does roll over, the NASDAQ will get a boost, right? If we continue higher still, then that's when we still have more pain to go. So just watch the dollar and see if we get above 106.8. If we do, we're likely going for 107 and 108, and that means the Nasdaq has a lot farther to fall. But if you know you set some alerts, and if the dollar drops below 105.5, then that really confirms a bearish market structure because then we have a, a swing low that broke this one, so that was bearish. We came up, couldn't take out the highs, and just took out the low again. So that's like a low, lower high, lower low. That's good confirmation for a bearish market structure. And at that point. I'd be more confident in going in longs on the NASDAQ, but for now, obviously, not confident right now. Now, let's take a look at the 10-year and the two-year. So yields have been ripping, absolutely ripping, very strong. Uh, the two-year, I think, possibly peaked, um, but no confirmation until we take out 4.9. So for now, it's still bullish, which means that if the you know, NASDAQ's likely to be weaker if the rates keep going up. Uh, so same thing, it's still bullish. Not a whole lot to say here other than there's a potential for a top to be put in, but too early to call because we need a bearish market structure shift. And I think that the, the correction is very close to being done. I think that we could get one final week or two of a sell-off, and then I think that we are in for a rally that's going to come basically November to the end of the year, the last two months, and take us right back up to 16000 on the NASDAQ and 4700 on ES. So I'm going to be looking to get into some longs on ES or NASDAQ. Uh, after some more confirmation. Give this video a thumbs up if you appreciate it. That's going to conclude this one. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.